All right. So, hey, Jacob, welcome to AppSolk by Mobile Action, and thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Dude, uh, I want to start a little bit about why Fields is so important to me. Um, yeah. Because that's, that's kind of like an interesting thing. What we are trying to now, I'm hosting the CEOs or co-founder of the companies I really like. Some of them I use day to day, like, you know, like some finance app or YouTube app. And some of them, like a Fields, Fields coffee, I drink at least minimum one per day. Awesome. And the funniest, the funniest story is that my first, when I started Mobile Action, I never heard it Phil's. That was like, I think, seven years ago. And one of the, my early investor and advisor, he invited me to the Middlefield Phil's in Palo Alto, Middlefield Road. And I got my first commitment, the funding commitment. I, I didn't get the first check. That dude was a little <laughs> bit late, but I got the, my first commitment. And I got so excited, honestly. And I just said, you know what, this coffee is so great because maybe the, the first commitment or something. Then later on, uh, I got my first check for a different coffee shop. But coffee is always important to me. That's the reason I am so happy. And thank you again for accepting our request for just this Zoom call. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's good to be here. And I'm glad to, that's, uh, that's an awesome story. I've, I've heard yeah. stories like that before, but it's, uh, it's super cool cool to hear that amazing so yeah let's just a little bit about let, learn about you and the fields the people who are not from bay area or like in the, from state i know you guys are like uh, marching like 50 store right now 60 60, 60 stores wow. yeah. amazing amazing yeah. yeah just give us a little bit about who you are and and what, what is phil's coffee and then we can take it from there it sounds good so phil's coffee the name phil's is my dad his name is phil and uh, he, he started the company. I, I, I worked with him from the very beginning, but he immigrated from the Middle East and Palestine. When he um, was about 15 years old, he came to the States. And you know, the culture and the environment where he grew up was quite different than the culture in America. Um, the you know, family, um, friends, food, drinks, sitting around a table, having a com conversation, you know, those were, those were a very rich part of the culture and, and, and his life growing up. You know, every evening someone would come over the house and his mom and would, would prepare food and coffee and tea and they'd all sit around a table. And, you know, the, my dad always says like the, the coffee table was really the original social network, you know, not, not, not Facebook. Um, so, you know, or they would go over someone's house and they'd have the same experience. So this idea of hospitality, this idea of food and connection and conversation, um, and just shooting the breeze with people casually uh, is was was what he grew up with. And uh, when he came to the states, the reason he came to the states is because he wanted opportunity. He want he wanted something more out of life, as many many do. Um, sounds like me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sounds like yeah. a similar story. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, he, he, when he was 15, he moved to the States and he was working and going to school and he saved up enough money to open up a grocery store, a corner grocery store in the Mission District in San Francisco. Uh, and everyone was just asking him, why the hell are you going to go open a grocery store, a small corner grocery store? And there's a couple of reasons. The first reason was that when he was 15 up until like 20, he helped his brother who also had a grocery store. So he learned a lot about how to run that business and he was just naturally pretty good at it. Um, and the, when he, when he, the, the reason why people thought he was kind of crazy for opening up his own store at the age of 21 was that there was four other stores that were exactly the same <laughs> across the street on different wow. corners. So imagine the competition, right? You, you're opening a store with the same store. Are they, fr are they from the same country also too? Like no, I th everyone, <laughs> no, no, there, I think there was one actually. Okay. <laughs> it's quite common, but there was yeah. one. And uh, uh, so he still decided to open up and, you know, he was asked, how are you going to succeed with so much competition? And he said, I'm going to focus on the customer. I'm going to focus on the customer. So it wasn't about the products. It was about the customer. And he wasn't afraid to evolve and change the store 
uh, as years went on to best serve the customer's needs. So that's a very important thread and, and core value that, that um, exists today at Phil's. But the problem with the grocery store is you buy an item and you leave. People don't stay for a while. My dad loves people. He loves talking to people. He loves connecting with people. He has all sorts of friends from all walks of life and gets along with everybody. And I think he, get, he, he got that from the hospitality that he, the, the, the hospitality that he grew up with um, in the Middle East and just want his desires always to make people feel like welcome comfortable, mm -hmm. treat him with kindness, with respect, just bringing people together. Um, but he loved coffee also. When he was 11 in the Middle East, he used to fill up his backpack with coffee beans. He used to buy from an older gentleman out of a garage and walk door to door and sell them. And he started drinking coffee at a young age. So he thought, how, how can I turn this grocery store into the environment that I grew up with and sharing really great coffee? So he visited 1,100 different coffee shops from around um, in the States to, exper to research and experiment, wow. um, not to copy anyone, but to really understand like what were people looking for. And what he learned is that um, uh, it, uh, there, it, it felt more like a transaction. To, mm -hmm. to get a cup of coffee in America, it, it felt like a transaction, um, not an experience. So the share he wanted to- yeah. Exactly. So he wanted to create an experience. So he, he created this concept where every cup was handmade one cup at a time. And you order directly from your barista at Phil's. You're not from a cashier. Mm -hmm. You order directly from the person that's making it for you. And he slowly transitioned the grocery store into a coffee shop. He popped up a station. He sampled it with his regulars. And eventually, you know, more and more people came for the coffee. So he eliminated aisles in the grocery store and replaced them with furniture from the house because he didn't have a lot of money. So oh, yeah, he literally yeah. took furniture from our house and <laughs> <laughs> used that for, for, for yeah. customers to sit. That was really still, still, still uh, Mission Street one? That was the Correct. first? That was right? the first one. Yep. First one. So, and I'll, I'll um, fast forward here, but I've been, I've been helping my dad since I was 10 years old when it was a grocery store. And around mm -hmm. the time it was transitioning to a coffee shop, um, I was going to school. I didn't really love school because I felt like I was forced to learn things that I wasn't really interested in from people who weren't that interesting. So I left and I worked with my dad full time. And at the age of 18, he gave me the opportunity to run the business. And at that point, it was just me and him behind the bar working seven days a week. Hustle. We didn't have a lot of customers to start off. We hustled. We earned it. And we did whatever we could to give people um, a cup of coffee that they, we think they'd love. And that's what we did. And fast forward, you know, we've grown and we didn't have plans to, you know, open more than a store, a couple of stores. But I think yeah. as we, as we saw success, we gained confidence and our, you know, more ambition around like the vision to really share this experience, this great personalized, delicious cup of coffee in an environment that makes you feel like you're at home with many people around the world. So we want to, we want to keep doing that. That's, that's amazing because I feel that your dad and I have so much, uh, common thing because when I first started, uh, my coffee shop, I was age 13 in boarding school and we can talk wow. this thing later on. I yeah. even published this story in, in my medium and blog, but today we're at app talks by mobile action. We have 200,000, uh, app marketer and developer in our community. They're like app builder, app marketer, or they're the CEO of the uh, big app companies. The reason I want to chat with you and then want to learn your story, because that's now makes sense <coughs> how customer centric and oriented you guys are. And I, when I'm using the app, I can already feeling that. That's the reason I want to ask you the first question. What is the role of app for the fields now? Yep. Um, you know, we think like we, we think about our, our job is to continue to um, enhance the customer experience. Like how do we keep making it better for the customer? One of the most important things with a, with a product like coffee that's consumed mm -hmm. every day is convenience and ease. So how do you remove friction from the experience? How do you make it easy to access fills every day? So, 
the app was really something we wanted to create because it enabled that convenience uh, and made it easier for people to get coffee. It wasn't about coming up with a fancy app. It was about serving the customers better. So um, since we're so obsessed about continuing to like keep pushing to make progress on making the customer experience better, we're always coming up with ideas, um, some that already I, exist, some we have I to learned, invent. I, I learned that the first version of the app is built by one of the customer, right? Yeah, well that, yeah, yes, yes. Uh, Julian is his name, he's amazing. Okay. So he's a customer at Middlefield where you mentioned mm, you met, okay. you, 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 where you met your, one of your investors. And he, uh, yeah, but like he, he's like, hey, you guys should have an app. Um, at that point we had four stores Mm. Um, and I was running that store. I was actually the manager of that store. And I, Maybe and, I and saw you that time, 2013. How many stores do you guys have that time? At that time, I think we were like a dozen. Oh, I was in less you guys that time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyways, he was just like, I, I was like, sure, that would be great. Feel free to do mm -hmm. that. And he, I said, you know, how would we pay you? We don't really, you know, we, we mm -hmm. can't, we can't really pay. He said, just give me a cup of coffee. <laughs> he built the app. Oh my yeah. god! Wow. And to this day, we we you know I don't I don't see him as much, but um, we kind of try to stay in touch. That, that was like a I look at the mobile action intelligence. That was like eight nine years ago, right? That was the first version of that. Yes, yes, yes. And and it was a really now, informational app. It wasn't okay. where you can order ahead. When you guys started uh, ordering the uh, the coffee uh, through app, I think last year that right? was. February 2018. We used to oh, use a third-party app prior, but we developed mm -hmm. and designed our own in 2000 and uh, February, I think March actually, 2018 is when we launched Phil's app. Phil's app, and that was like, what was the person, like, if you can like share some sort of number, still people, I mean, I, I, I had an app, I, whenever like in the rush, I was ordering order ahead, I also used the multiple apps before your own app because so yes. so interesting the fields in my life my uh, previous two office nearby the fields and then my last apartment in the city Folsom and Fremont just next to the fields coffee and yes. I was using the, that place as an office actually I my office in uh, North Beach was a little bit far to me like 15 minutes walk instead of going to early in the office I was going to fields and meeting the people uh, yep. and then just do like custom meeting or something but it's always like um, I was seeing the people line up and they just do like uh, start seeing the menu because if you're a first time of the fields, I also know the people, you know, if you go first time in the fields, if you order like latte or something like that, they can say, yeah. oh, you're the first time. Let's coffee on exactly. us. It, it used to be like that. Is this still similar? Like. If yeah, we give time. a first timer introduction totally because mm -hmm. uh, it is different. We don't do t traditional lattes; everything yeah. is handmade. So we do have that kind of experience for for a first timer. That's Let's different. talk like l last six months. So now, I mean, app was been the market like two and a half years. The reason I want to also chat because I see your app is top charts in food and uh, drink category. This is a app store has a twenty four different category. Maybe you know, maybe you don't know. And yes. the food and drink is a big category right now. A lot of the companies, they either use like third party apps for the food delivery or they just start launching their own app. Now you're only, people only can order the Phil's Coffee, your own app, right? Yes, we have, we are piloting with Uber Eats for delivery, okay. but primarily we focus on our own, on our own app. And, Since and then COVID, biggest, right? Because yeah, everyone's yeah. at home. Biggest drive of your, the customer, the like, uh, not an acquisition part is like, let's say if you're a uh, re retain and engage customer fields, which means like you have a history, you know, the fields, you yes. go there and then they can tell you that, you know what, we cannot accept the order uh, on the store. You need to order uh, before you come to the place, right? How it works out right now. The, can you still so, order in the store? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so right now we have to, you know, we incur, we, since COVID we've encouraged mm -hmm. everybody to download the Phil's app to use it because it promotes a more safe contactless experience. You don't need to exchange payment um, and it's more convenient. You just go there and you pick up your drink. But for customers who don't want to download the app or um, just prefer to order, we have a walk-up experience where you just mm -hmm. order with the person at the door. So there's two experiences and over the next couple of weeks, we're actually gonna be opening up um, 
some of our stores so that we can, we can kind of create lanes. If you're a mobile user, you go and pick up your oh, drink at the mobile nice. bar. And then if you're not a mobile, mobile user, which is totally fine, you walk right up and you order with, with uh, one of our team members and they'll, take, they'll, they'll graciously take your order. The reason I asked you what's the role of the app, because I mean, it looks like, you know, still we're gonna be live this uh, lifestyle, at least, I don't know, like another year, maybe less, maybe more, who knows. So, and where do you think that you're gonna mostly engage the customer? Because you used to be, as you said, you're customer oriented, people order first and then they pay. In the, in the meantime, they can sit the couch. I see some of the like Burlingame store, or the San Mateo, or even the city one, it's a place people mingle, meet, network, or also like do study, work, all kind of stuff. But now you don't have a retail space. Where do you think yeah. you're gonna engage the customer? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, part of what made Phil special is the gathering place where you can sit and you can socialize and hang out. And we've reopened our patios at stores mm. safely for that, um, but we're not yet ready to open up inside of the stores. For some of the stores, we're gonna do that, like in our East Coast and Midwest markets in the anticipation of winter, we wanna, we're gonna safely open up. Um, but we'll get back to that. But to your point, the question is when, it's gonna yeah. take some time. But if you think about it, before COVID, you know, um, digital commerce was, was on the rise. I think COVID has just accelerated it. Um, so I do think when things normalize, um, there's going to be more consumers who, you know, higher percentage of consumers who use digital than before COVID, but I don't think it's going to be as high as it is today. Um, but again, I, I think over the long arc of time, you know, at the end of the day, it's just about delighting your customers. That's so true. True. we got to keep focusing on, on that and then figure out how we can innovate and adapt to, to do that over time. The, the reason is I ask it because I also want to ask you, um, where do you see the, how do you see the future of the coffee? Yeah. Be, because the, I mean, now you can order from mobile. What are you guys doing? Like any, any plan for the e-commerce? M-com- we, when we say e-commerce, I actually like prefer m-commerce. Do you still, like now you use the fills app, you order and you need to pick up. How about yes. ordering? And then you can deliver to me via app. Do you guys planning yes. any? We are, yeah. we are actually planning on that. It's a great okay. question. Yeah. Because the whole idea is OmniFills, right? We have a project yes. called OmniFills, which is just okay. about making it easy for you to get your fills your way. No matter the device you use, we want to make it easy for you to get your fills your way, whether it's pickup, delivery or shipping. So we are on that journey. Um, And I think that's just super important because you want to give customers options, let them choose the experience they desire and deliver on it. Sure. And, and what is the, the mobile team is right now is in house or do you guys like work in some amazing. So you have a like team. team dedicated for app development and how about the app growth? Do you guys do anything for the growth marketing for the app? You know, we, we may even be a little bit behind here, but we've grown organically. Um, and we're just, we're just starting to put some energy and effort into um, growth marketing uh, for, for the mobile app and for our e-commerce website. But, you know, we, we, we don't do a ton. We, we have not done a ton. So we're just starting to get into that. But I'm a big believer that the most important thing is getting the experience for the customer, right? The product and the experience. And if you do that really, really, really well, over time, you're going to develop fans. Um, so, um, you know, hopefully though in the next coming months, we're going to be putting some more marketing energy into growing, growing our app. Amazing. I mean, it's because, grown, it's grown by almost yeah. four right? just since COVID. Yeah. yeah I mean, technically app, your, app your, your, your consumer acquisition is your existing customer who want to order the coffee. They just download yes. the fields. And maybe in the first timer, uh, they might see the top charts of what is fields, but I don't think so. Anybody who never tried the fields, they might just order it because of app. But later on, if you do the growth marketing, it might be to yes. give them the chance to do it. Uh, the but our stores I, uh, are our yeah. greatest driver 
of right That's so true. if there has to be a fill store so when there's a fill store nearby there's no greater marketing engine than having more stores so that's amazon. an important factor. Yeah, amazon, amazon is now is like they're opening up the you know all the stores of four star because i yes. feel that after i watched your couple of videos and then read some article about the fields fields is like is more than retail company which is like okay coffee is yes. more than retail for sure and you guys are uh, uh vc funded and you yes. do you feeling that you are like a technology married with the retail experience plus uh, how do you like position yourself that's that's another thing like okay coffee i asked you the question like with the future of coffee you said omni channels like you want to be get the experience whenever you want to feel you want you'll get it but yeah. also nature of being bay area or like a silicon valley based company that's your yeah. hq right so what, what are you guys feeling that the positioning the company I mean, I think at the end of the day, it's always going to come back to great coffee that's personalized to your taste. Mm -hmm. um, and I think being born in Silicon Valley as a company, we embrace technology uh, and we're going to keep, you know, we're going to keep investing in, in, in technology because we actually, not because of its, because it might be cool to do so, but because it helps us serve our customers better, right? So we always... We're always thinking about how do we continue to improve the product and how do we continue to make it easier for people to get that product? And then how do we keep making the experience better? So when I think about the future, I really think about, I, I want just how you have a cup of fills in your hand. I want yeah. someone, I want everybody to have a cup of fills in their hand every day. Um, so the way to do that is really, it's not one, there's not one way, but, Opening stores is a big part of that. Um, growing our digital presence is a big part of that. Growing our wholesale partnerships, like you can buy a bag of beans at Whole Foods or Target or Safeway. Our online, you can go online to fillscoffee.com and order bags. So it's just about um, making sure we're, um, the most important thing to me is the cup because you can't, yeah. you know, the way it's made at the store is handmade. Uh, you can't, you can't get yeah. that, you can't get that sure. at, at online um but just continuing to make it easier for people to get their fills uh so i but i don't think we're i would, would, would definitely not call us a technology company i'd call us a um a coffee company who's with obsession around the customer experience and because of that we embrace um technology we embrace um uh, ways to, you know, that we can innovate. We embrace innovation and like, how do we keep making it better for the customer? So and we're just obsessed on, about that. Yeah, and, and app is a one channel and, and technology itself, if you can personalize and then knowing more like, okay, what this guy's ordered back in time or like when, when is the birthday or like who is ordering, how many copies he's ordering. These are all cool stuff. Probably you guys have internal team using maybe the data to make it why you guys started the fills um, um, filter sold the the the, the, the cold, cold version cold brew yeah. because maybe filter sold the, everyone's most favorite or no, no one is trying yes. for it something like that right the menu exactly. even if even if itself what we are what we are seeing a lot of our customers app only product or app only experience or e commerce only the product which is like they can only find it those channel build yep. some engagement and retention for in the long run. Totally. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the brands that I think are going to win are the brands who um, deliver an exceptional product or service that people love and they uh, make it easy. You know, they, they, they give you options um, to choose the experience that you want uh, yep. and it's done really well. And I think that's, that's, you can't stop innovating. You can't stop innovating. Um, you got to keep making it. You got to keep making it better. You can't. St you can't get complacent. Yeah. Nawal is saying that it's not about ten thousand hours. It's it's about ten thousand iteration. Yes, I like that. Yes. That's a good distinction. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. So, Jacob Jabber, thank you so much for joining us today. I mean, the field is pleasure. so important. That, as I said before, also my family. We're a big fan of the fields. And now after this uh, the video chat, 
I am sure that our uh, the audience from US and then oversight the the oversee uh, the audience like Europe and Middle East and Japan. We're big user from Japan. Uh, they might can order via your website. Yes. In, yes. And Phil'sCoffee.com. Phil's is with a Z. Z, right? Phil's yes. Phil'sCoffee.com. They can order yes. online, and then we you guys maybe have some YouTube channel. They can show how to make the, your Phil's coffee. That yep. might be the, uh, the cool way to they, they can try new coffee. Thank you again. And, and thank and, you. I appreciate yeah. it. This was fun. Thank you for the opportunity.